Dag Luc, ça va? Ja, ça va, ça va. Nee, vandaag is er een kleine reshoot. Want uh, vorige keer heb ik een klein foutje gemaakt met kort kort. Je weet al de video. Hè? Maar uh, ja, kijk, ik was in fout. Ik beken kleur. Dat kan gebeuren inderdaad. Maar dus, ja, ik moest eigenlijk uh, een, expert, een expert, de hulp van een expert inroepen. Natuurlijk, uh, een die ik goed ken, een goede speler, is mijn vriend. Hè. Patrick Francisca. Heb je vrienden buiten mij? Jongen, ik ken vrienden. Maar de Pinot telt niet mee, hè? Jij laat mijn kat hier buiten, oké? Okay? Die heeft hier niets mee te maken, oké? Okay? Hey, kom, kom eens hier. Gast, hey, ik ga het u duidelijk maken, zo wat? Oei, oei, oei. Wat? De dorst? Ja, ik heb dorst. Ik neem het maar een beetje dichterbij. Ik ga het uitleggen. Ik ga het uitleggen. Ah, leuk. Jij zegt niets over mijn kat, oké? Okay? Je zegt niets over mijn kat. Ja, loop maar weg. So hello everybody, welcome back to another video. And as I said in last year's video about the short game, I said that I was going to come back on the topic and yeah, put out a follow-up video about the short game because there was a fifth point, a fifth key point planned in that video about how to step in properly. And uh, let me just roll the tape and yeah, see what you can spot or whatever you think is wrong about it, about my logic. So. Next up is we're going to look how to step in properly. Um, we're going to look at two things here. Is first of all, what to do with this other leg. So I'll just go over this rather quickly. Is that first you do this sort of one, two step. So one step with the, with the non-dominant foot, then the other step with the dominant foot. Okay, so that is basically it. So you're standing here, one, two, you're playing the ball, getting back. Okay, one, two, getting back. But now, this dominant foot, there are, a little bit, there are a little bit of nuances to the way you are supposed to set that foot. So, should you step in with the heel first or with the front of your foot first? If you pay close attention to some matches, you pay really close attention to the way some players step in, you'll find out that not everybody does it the same way. You see, it's all about knowing when you can do what sort of step in. So, for example, after receive, in my opinion at least, if you ask me, I'm not the one who writes all the table tennis laws, in my opinion, on a receive, you can do both. You can step in both with the heel of your foot first, by landing on the heel of your foot, but you can do also do it the other way, by coming in with the front of your foot. You'll see Malong do the first one, sometimes, whenever he's going for a short forehand receive. But there are other players who do the opposite. In that situation, it is not as crucial because also serve, receiving on a serve, it's hard to find the stability. You want to be nice and stable. You want to get your time to pay attention to the ball. However, you want to adapt to the certain specific rotation. You see, it's not so easy. So that's why you can land on your heel, be a little bit more stable. But here comes the tricky part. Afterwards, so in the rally, Whenever you're playing short, short, or anywhere else besides after receive, you're going to have to step in with the front of your foot first. Because if you land on the heel at that point in time, you will not be explosive enough to get back. So that's why you'll see also Malong. As I said, Malong sometimes when he receives on a serve, he'll step in with his heel, but he won't do that anymore in the rally. You see, I derive this logic about the heel first, the forefoot first, you know, this difference in speed. Well, just because of in the regular game, it's also basically sort of the same principle about, yeah, if you step in, no, if you move and you land on your heel, it's a bad thing to do normally in a rally. But as I was trying to look at match examples of players, of professional players, uh, I found some inconsistencies, not only between players, who were doing not the same thing, but also just players themselves who in the same match, sometimes even in the same point, they stepped in once with the heel first, once with the forefoot first. And so, yeah, obviously I had to rethink my logic, rethink my ideas. So 
that's why I called in the help of somebody, of uh, Patrick Francisca. Patrick Francisca was the, the person who was at the end of my last video. And I played in his club, FC Saarbrücke. I played there for two years in the second team. I went along for a few times with the first team for a few matches. So I got to know him sometimes, also in the hall, practice hall, sitting on the bench, whatever. And overall, yeah, I'm, I mean, I can tell you he's such a nice guy. And I thank him very much that he wanted to, that he gave me like a really broad response, which he shouldn't have, of course. He could have also just sent me a small text. But if you look at the tour and you want to take a look at people who are like the most technically sound, then I think he is one of the names that comes up first. Because overall, his stability, his overall technique, it's really nice to look at. Just because, yeah, he's so technically sound, technically complete. It doesn't really look like there's a weak side in his game because I have his phone number, but also just because he knows the game very well, I decided to, yeah, not to call him up, but to send him a text. And yeah, the response of his goes more or less like this. Actually, I think it's a very important thing, but it's not so much used in practice or people don't know so much about it. When you look my video from 2.90 and against Shu Shin in Australia, there I felt I was stepping in quite good, like I made a small, let's say, small jump. Yeah, basically I think it's very important to be like behind the ball, uh, not, I see many players, including me, um, let's say it comes deep in the forehand or in the forehand side and like the legs are somewhere in the backhand side and just the right arm is somehow on the ball and that's way too far away if you look at the chinese i feel they are many times behind the ball um so they are like closer to the ball with the whole body and like in this position of course you can move out faster as well like i mean if you look at i don't know malong or the other ones i mean they are they are out faster after like the ball is at the opponent and they are already out of the table. And us, I would say Europeans, we are like still close to the net and the ball is already at the opponent. I don't know if you know what I mean, but I feel the position is as important as it is for a forehand or backhand topspin. Just people don't pay so much attention because it's these small margins and small details. But yeah, look. Maybe look this match from 2.19 against Shushin from me. There I felt I was doing it, especially after my serve when he played short. I felt I was stepping in quite good. So basically what he's saying is uh, also what we discussed in the previous video about how you cannot stand too far from the ball because that just leads to you losing a lot of control in the shot. And also it leads to you losing speed, losing time. And that was basically just his first part of his explanation about it's more important to really just stand close to the ball and if you want to get back in time if you want to be on the ball in time and yeah I looked at his match in Australia and you can see countless of examples of him just really being stable when he's stepping in when he's stepping out for the first ball for a counter spin afterwards he was yeah there he was just really very stable uh, which also comes from the fact as he just said that when he steps in even in the short, deep forehand, when he stepped in, yeah, he was in position. If it was necessary, he took an extra step. And that led to him playing a very, very good match against Ryushin that day. But it didn't really answer my question. So I sent him a follow-up text about, yeah, if he really paid attention in his life about how to step in with the heel first or the forefoot first. Because, again, as I said, in that match, also of him, you can see inconsistencies about him sometimes stepping in with the forefoot first or sometimes with the heel first. And this was his response. Yeah, actually I was never thinking of stepping in with the heel first, but I guess the most important is to be like, I mean, when you land, I think it doesn't matter so much, but when you touch the ball, I mean, I guess you should stand on the forefoot so you can move out quickly again. Um, if you stand on the heel the whole time, 
I think you don't step out fast enough after this ball. Um, yeah, but of course not totally on the on the front foot because you need to be a little bit stable also. See, and this little remark about the stability and the forefoot, it's uh, quite remarkable and I think I have sort of an explanation for it. Obviously, in my previous explanation, I never meant that if you step in with the forefoot first, you only stay standing on the forefoot. No, of course not. So you roll off and eventually your heel, uh, your heel will touch the ground. But if you look at match examples, a lot of times, again, not always, but I think very often, most of the time, you see that when somebody is stepping in with the front foot, with the forefoot first, then that means that they are already in time in position. However, if they're a little bit too late and they need to like catch the ball when the ball is already going down, that is often the time where they will step in with their heel uh, first. So they will hand, land with the heel and roll off afterwards. And I think the stability is also what is needed when you're receiving on a serve, because again, a lot of different factors come into play. The rotation, you're not so sure, not so familiar with the opponent. So that is also the time where you really land on the heel first and afterwards you roll off on the front of your foot. But again, another important remark of his is that if you step in, however it is, with the heel first, with the front of your foot first, if you step in, it's important to end your movement more on the front of your foot meaning that your center of gravity should be more forward so you can really push yourself back off which is just a basic principle of table tennis basically so if you're moving always you're moving and this is how you jump if you try to jump with the heel first you can try it yourself if you stand if you stand for example right now if you try to jump as high as you can you have to do it by really launching yourself off from your toes from the front of your foot you cannot do it from your heels and so here's basically the same principle which is that if you step in, always important to end the movement or sort of have your center of gravity shifted more towards the front of your foot. So afterwards you can move out, step back out more explosively. Um, yeah, but yeah, as I said, I think the moving in close to the, close to the ball and behind the ball with the whole body um, and the arm has to be in front, like the arm cannot be cannot be down because if the arm is in front you see if it's short you play short back if it's half long you still decide if the arm is back it's not so easy because you have to do one extra movement and that is also what we discussed in the previous video about yeah having your racket high first and not starting low and having to move back up again And then I think it's important if you need one step or two steps, depending where the ball is landing. Like if it's deep in the forehand, probably you need two small steps um, or even three sometimes. But I think it's like a technique like with every other shot. Um, the legs have to be there before the arm is there. Yeah, and that was more or less his explanation. And obviously he gave consent for me to use this in my video. I think we covered a lot of what he said in the previous video. I think these two videos about my about the short game, they're quite complimentary. So if you can, please check out the video. I will leave a link on the screen right now. Yeah. Yeah, off. But there already we discussed about not standing too far, about having your racket high first. Uh, those are all very important. And as he said, uh, footwork and just basic positioning, it is like a ground stone, I think if, if that's a word, of table tennis. I think that's your foundation and you should build on that. And what he said, yeah, I mean, it really helped a lot also in just for me. Uh, hopefully it also helped you and again I thank you to Patrick for uh, explaining this video a little bit further even though he didn't have to again I haven't seen him in a couple of months so there's really no obligation so it just shows you how much of a nice guy he is really yeah so again I think uh, we all learned a little bit something today and that is that if you should step in however you do it make sure that you're not standing too much on the heel or that you're quite stable first of all that you're close enough and so that you have the ability to step back out in an explosive way. 
I think that was the video for today. If there are any questions, please leave them down below. I'll take a look at it. And for now, I'll just say goodbye and hopefully I will see you in the next video.